So we are back, and we are discussing now my favorite topic, politics. We have Matt on the show because me and him really love it, and Maggie has not stopped listening to me talk about it, so she knows a lot too now. Uh, I know some stuff. <laughs> I mean, they are the primaries in Wisconsin. This could be a really big game changer for Ted Cruz, but for my favorite Trump. Um, so right now, Trump. So what is at stake is 42 delegates. And for the Democrats, Bernie Sanders and is pre- the predicted winner, and it's 86 delegates, and Ted Cruz is the predicted winner. But I saw an exit poll at four people, and right now Trump is at 75, and, Tr- and Ted Cruz is at 25. Four, no, it's only four people. But- Wait, now, um, the governor of Wisconsin, um, Rex... Oh, um, oh, my gosh. Governor... Uh, I should know this. Go, um, Rick Scott. Rick Scott, yeah. I, maybe, I yeah. I think that's, that's right. Um, uh, he, uh, who did he endorse? Did I think, did he endorse Marco Rubio? I forget. Um, I don't think he endorsed Trump. Um, I know, yeah, no, no, because no, he, he, he he's not protected to win in most House level. He, um, he, he dropped out uh, back in the fall, I think, okay. after yeah. failing in a lot of the polls in the different states. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So, but yeah, uh, Wisconsin <laughs> uh, will be a big day. Uh, a in, big, big day. It'll be a big day in I uh, leave my computer. Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'll be watching the Fox News oh. and CNN coverage tonight. Yeah, um, definitely. Po- the polls probably close around 9 or 10, um, and then they got to count. I forgot which state it was. It wasn't Arizona. What was the other one that Cruz won? Utah? No, it'll, no. Utah, maybe? I want to say something, but I don't know anything. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll talk about, you know, so we don't get we don't get into maybe like, um, we'll talk more about the culture of everything, because you could like elaborate on that with Hollywood and everything, because Mag, like I want to talk about just how this election is not just foreign policy, it's not just national security, it's not just, you know, economics, this is a cultural war, which is why this could be explained why so many people are getting behind Trump. And, you know, you can say what you want, not true conservative, you know, he makes comments on abortion, he does, like, a lot of controversial things, but if you don't, like, if you don't acknowledge at this point, first of all, all the pundits on, you know, the experts on Fox and CNN have been predicting Trump to, like, not even be this far, you know, in June, last June when he, like, said he was going to run, they all said that, you know, like, he'll maybe last month, whatever it was. And now they're trying to predict the next six months. And it's like, what credibility do you have at this point? Because you got it all wrong. There's such a big cultural gap between the elite mainstream media, most of them. There's a couple of good ones that like are fair. They don't even have to like yeah. Trump, but they're fair. I know. And there's a big cultural gap between the American people and our political class and the elite <laughs> mainstream media. And to not acknowledge the fact that people are frustrated, people are tired of being you know, politically correct, they can't criticize feminism, they can't criticize anything and that explains why this is a cultural war we're we're living in really exciting times because basically everybody unless you're a bernie sanders supporter or trump supporter you want to burn down the washington you want to burn down you know the establishment so i think it's interesting Uh, you know um Last week, there was a Republican town hall on, mm-hmm. um, hosted on CNN yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and moderated by um, Anderson. Uh, Anderson Cooper. Yeah. And uh, he had both, um, or he had all three, I'm sorry, Ted Cruz, Donald Trump, and John Kasich. Yeah. And I, I thought Anderson Cooper did a good job. He, 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 he did. He was very neutral. He, he did. You know, um, he asked some tough questions. And, he did. You know, uh, which is good. You know, that's what the people want to hear. Uh, all exactly. the top questions and all the issues going on in the election. And um, Donald Trump currently has 736 delegates. Yep. Um, and Ted Cruz has 463. So we'll see uh, if that... <laughs> this um, just can't get to a contested convention because they will not give it to him. First of all, you have to win, a, I think, eight states to get on the first ballot in yeah. the convention. So why is John Kasich still in this thing? Just, I guess they, I guess maybe he's paid a lot of money just so Trump, it, so it can get to a contested convention because he is getting some delegates. Like Trump could have won Ohio if it wasn't for Kasich. I don't know, but I wanted to read something really interesting. Do you know who Milo Yiannopoulos is? He's narrow on Twitter. He's just a really he's a journalist for Breitbart. He is a he's from Britain. He's a British journalist, but he's like. Uh, really involved in American politics and he's just basically talk he's a really big Trump supporter but and people say to him like well you're really educated on this stuff you know like why would you like get behind somebody that like wouldn't 
you know, is not necessarily like, you know, people like might support him, but they know like they're really they know too much to know that like it could go really badly. Some people like fifty percent of Americans vote on perception, so that's the whole like a lot of people have no information. There's low information low information voters on both sides, but basically he says you know Donald Trump has captured the imagination of a huge part of the Mar- American public. The prospect of a Trump presidency terrifies not just liberals but conservatives. He threatens to blow apart the political consensus, to blow apart political correctness in particular, and base and then he starts talking about how he would love to see. A political alignment with no longer just Republican and Democrats, but libertarians and authoritarians. Because I think even if you economically, I mean, I have a problem with that. But I think even if like you are like a classic liberal and you have liberal principles, and you're very conservative, you both agree in you know the First Amendment, freedom of speech, you know all of that. And then there's authoritarians who are protesting Trump rallies, trying to get his thing to shut down. You know, like, it's one thing to protest peacefully, but to specifically try to shut down a guy from not even elaborating on his ideas where millions of Americans are behind him, standing in the middle of the road so people can't get to him. You didn't change anybody's minds. Like, that person that was going to go to their Arizona rally and you wouldn't let them get there, you think they sat there in the car going, oh, yeah, thank you. I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to vote for Bernie now. Like, that's not going to happen. And these people just... It's like a crybaby generation we live in. And I don't care who you support but let people speak. It's one of my biggest pet peeves, and I can't even watch like uh, coverage of it anymore. You know, um, and Angelica and I were talking about this uh, prior to coming back from commercial break, mm-hmm. but um, we would have liked to have seen um, former mayor of New York City, Michael Bloomberg, jump in the race. Um, you know, uh, he would have had my vote. He He's had my vote from day one, even though, uh, you know, I haven't voted in New York City. But I've supported him in uh, all three terms as New York City mayor. Uh, the fact that he was able to pull off three terms in New York City since the limit is two uh was <laughs> you know fascinating um and i thought he did a good job despite you know being criticized at times uh he was he was a democrat at first then he changed to a republican then um he finished off his uh third term as an independent um which you know it it didn't matter he yeah. he still did a good job he turned the city around yeah. um did you what did you i i know the basics of him honestly i don't know yeah. i i don't necessarily say i would vote for him only because I'm very, like, low information on him. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I know my mom liked Giuliani, but yeah. she hates de Blasio. <laughs> um, w- did you hear about the, uh, that, uh, you know, when he was mayor, that soda ban that he was trying, like, to, um, he was trying to, uh, kind of ban large sodas and make, uh, y- you know, Trying to make people healthier. Okay. Um, they did that. Um, that's like in my high weird. school. They like yeah. cut down on um, I think sugary was, drinks. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. They would only as serve, if that's like, going to minimize the food. harm. As if people are going to stop drinking them, though. Like I just don't. I know. Yeah. I don't understand. I never understood that. Like why you, you would cut f- down on. <laughs> it's one thing to like make your lunch. kid. I think it's like a, a parental um, thing. So, we will be back to discuss more politics and you know maybe a little bit of entertainment and we will be right back. 